Hey friends, Patrick here and today let's talk about code first migrations with Entity Framework or to be more precise, two little pitfalls that you might fall into when you want to use code first migration with Entity Framework in .NET 8, but it doesn't really matter if it's .NET 8 or 7 or 6 or even 5. I think it works pretty much the same even with those versions and I guess with .NET 9 as well. Anyways, this was again a question in the .NET Web Academy. Big shout out to Philip here. Greetings to Denmark. Thank you very much for that question and for your code because what Philip wanted to do here is the following. Maybe a bit of context. This is from the Blazor and Clean Architecture Masterclass in the Academy where we create a more comprehensive block application using clean architecture, CQRS, mediator pattern, and also entity framework with code first migration. You see it here, we've got the layers, application, domain, infrastructure, and then the presentation. Philip called it here presentation server. In the end, it's a Blazor web app, and this is only the server part, meaning only static server side rendering for now. What we wanted to do here is typically for a clean architecture, for instance, you can also see it here in the application layer that we're going to use dependency injection and an extension method for the iService collection so that we can for one register an article service here, for instance, in the application layer and then back to the presentation layer and the program CS, which is here then the sole thing, the starting project. Here we want to then register again, the application layer and also the infrastructure layer. Great stuff that Philip did here because we are also providing the uh, builder configuration because we wanna access the connection string here for our database. So far, so good. So here we have the infrastructure extensions where we wanna register our database context and the application database context, as you can see here, is implemented here. By the way, great use of primary constructors here available since C Sharp 12, so brand new stuff. And then we have the property, the database set, the articles. All right, so this is everything correct. I can already tell you that. Now, what about here? First, what Philip here wanted to do is if we have the development environment set with the help of an environment variable, then we wanna use an in-memory database. To be able to do that, we also need a package and you can also see uh, here actually, that's the one Microsoft Entity Framework Core in memory. And with that, we don't have to use a SQL server database for instance, or MySQL or SQLite, whatever you wanna use our application Entity Framework would use memory well to build, create the database, make all the transactions there and so on. Okay, so in that case, in memory database. Otherwise, we wanna make use of SQL Server using the SQL Server provider. Same thing here, or this thing is also available here as you can see there. And we're going to use our uh, entity framework core tools, all right? So actually not the uh, CLI, we wanna use the tools, the tools package, also a great way to make use of code first migrations. Now, first maybe the environment variable. So what we wanna do here is we go to our uh, properties of uh, the project and then we go way down actually here to debug. There it is. In here, you can set your environment variables. So open debug launch profiles. And down here, first we say ASP.NET Core environment. And let's just say this is now development. We don't have to save it or anything. We just hit return or even don't have to do that. Just close the dialog. I'm not doing that very often. But anyways, this is now how our application should know that, Jesus, where is it? There it is. Should now know that we wanna actually make use of the in-memory database. And now what you might wanna do is you wanna do still code first migrations, right? Now let's try that. We just enter at dash migration initial for our first migration. And let's just see what's happening now. All right, so the build was actually succeeded. So here, as you can see, build started, then build succeeded. 
and then unable to resolve service for type Microsoft Entry Framework Core migrations. I migrated this is often because no database provider has been configured for this DB context. Then something about the unconfiguring method and so on and so on. But actually the big secret here is when you want to use an in-memory database, you don't have to use code first migrations here. It works just like that or it should in the end. So this is the first pitfall. If you think, okay, I'm building my MVP here, right? So a little tiny uh, application just to test if my idea works and I want to use an in-memory database with Entity Framework Core, then forget code first migrations. You don't have to do anything with code first migrations. It should actually work just like that. Still configure a DB context, add your uh, DB sets and so on, but Code first migration, forget about that. Okay, when this is done, we can maybe just uncomment that. So we will see that now the secret provider will be used. For that, you have to add the uh, migrations and then apply them. So again, we add an initial migration here. And now what we see here now is it says your target project clean block presentation server doesn't match your migrations assembly clean block infrastructure either change your target project or change your migrations assembly now it could be the case that when uh, you don't use uh, let's say more advanced architecture like a clean architecture with several layers and so on and you only have one big project where you have your database context you have your program cs everything is on one place in the end then you pretty much won't ever see something like that because you would run this command add migration and it would just work but in that case the error message actually already tells you that your default project that is set here this is the server project but what we actually had to do is we had to set the infrastructure project here to uh, be able to use the db context options builder as it says here right so we need the project where we have our application db context let me just uh, show you that again here is the application db context right and with that then this should actually work so let's try that again one more time at migration initial and now it worked isn't that great so here now you see this is the migration file everything looks great we have our down method here we have our up method there a table will be created with all the properties and then next step would be to run update database even though we don't have a database this command will also create it and you see all the sql commands there and then your database is available and your app will use this sql server database in that case i hope this was not too easy too simple for you maybe as a beginner this is more interesting for advanced developers maybe not i don't know tell me in the comments what you think about that i hope you learned something still and if you did please guys hit the like button Subscribe to my channel, it does help. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to all my patrons supporting me on Patreon. And of course, as always, thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you next time. Take care.